CataractCoach.com. When the anterior capsule wrinkles, here's how I carefully approach these cases. Now, you know wrinkling of the anterior capsule means zonular support is less than normal. I want that anterior capsule to be taut, really pulled, stretched tight like the head of a drum. In this case, you're not going to have that. We sped the video up. You can see here, chart on the rexus. Now, here's the key, key point. Poke in, and it just wrinkles. See the radial wrinkles? And it's hard to poke into the capsule. If the capsule was nice and taut, it'd be a lot easier to poke into it. So here we're able to finally start that rexus. So let's make a very careful five to five and a half millimeter capsule rexus. And I'm watching the entire time, making sure the whole lens isn't shifting on me. So this appears to me like just kind of global zion or laxity. So all around 360, all the zions are a little bit on the weak side. You can see that in certain conditions, pseudo exfoliation, maybe a history of prior angle closure and ischemia to the eye. Maybe some kind of trauma, but typically that trauma is more focal. But in this case, now we're keeping in mind that there is some zonal laxity. So I'll do some higher dissection, nice and careful. I'm looking for that fluid wave to go across the back. And we're going to see how this lens kind of approaches us. How does it present? And we'll be able to take it as it comes. Now, if I can get it out of the capsule bag, that's going to make life a lot easier. There you go. Now, why is this easier? Because I'm not going to put any stress on the capsule bag. A little more viscoelastic going in, inside there to protect the central corner of the endothelium. Just a small aliquot, not a huge volume. Going with the phaco probe, and the first thing I want to do is get that chopper behind the nucleus, trap it, and chop it. And now that I have two halves, that first half I can emulsify. And just ask yourself, how much stress is there on the caps or bag now? And really not a whole lot, very minimal if any. Because we've tilted the lens out of the bag, we're able to operate in that kind of supracapsular space around the plane of the iris. And so now, we're moving the rest of the first half. So half the nucleus is gone just about like that. Second half is sitting there underneath the chopper. You can bring that in front, bring it around. If you want to, you can further subchop it or simply just emulsify it there at the iris plane. Again, I'm not operating up against the endothelium. I'm operating closer to the iris plane. Chopper in that safe position just to make sure that capsule bag doesn't come forwards. And we're just about done. So nucleus is out. Now let's get some cortex out with the IA probe. So here comes the IA probe, a little bit of a nuclear chunk there, blocking the tip, we'll push it in there, make sure that doesn't block our tip. And let's watch carefully as I'm doing the cortex removal, I'm looking also at the rexus edge. Make sure the rexus is not moving. If the rexus edge is moving, well, obviously that means the zonal support's even worse than you thought. You're moving the whole capsular bag, and I don't want that. And fortunately here, we don't have that issue. The capsular rexus stays still. It does not move. So let's just keep finishing up here. Polish up the capsular bag. I don't want a whole lot of residual lens epithelial cells in the bag because that may help predispose this eye to more capsular contraction later. So fill the bag up now with a cohesive viscologic. Still a little bit of cortex and lens epithelial cells remaining. Don't worry, we'll clean those up there at the end. Good looking rexus. Let's get the IOL in. Single piece acrylic lens, I believe, going in the capsular bag. Inject that in there. Let it unfold and open up. And we can put that into position using that chopper. And now you can see why that Rex is on board. Now, if you did have some more zonal laxity than this, you could put in a capsular tension ring, especially if it was a focal zonal laxity. I think that'd be a good idea. And um, obviously, you need an intact capsular Rex in order to put in a CTR. And that looks great. Look at that overlap. Just about a perfect Rex. It's five, five and a half millimeter Rex, maybe, and a six millimeter optic. Let's go gently behind the optic and remove our viscoelastic. Going a little bit slow motion here. Let's see what's going on here. Just making sure, I think. Now, there we go. Lifting up the optic. Now we have the tip of the eye pro behind the optic, getting all that viscoelastic out. This is the cohesive viscoelastic, so a lot easier to remove. And then remove that viscoelastic, get that lens set it up. Let's clear out the AC, make sure there's no viscoelastic left in the anterior chamber. And boy, this is looking like a pretty good case here. Now, you can do a little more polishing if you wish of the undersurface of the anterior capsular rim. But I think that at this point, we're looking pretty good. I just want to make sure there's no retained viscoelastic inside the eye. You can see there's a very nice overlap. Again, good size rexus. And let's hydrate the incision. Good architecture. Look how long that tunnel length is. So you don't need a whole lot of hydration. That is more than enough. Let's go through the side port. Let's do a little angle sweep. Get a look at that. Wow, retained viscoelastic. I'm glad we did that move. 
get all that retained visco elastic out, that would have caused an IOP spike on post-op day one. So clean that out and seal up the incision. Let's call this a day. So that looks really good, and that's going to be a beautiful outcome for the patient. And again, a little more BSS, just getting that lens centered, making sure there's no retained visco elastic inside the eye. Very nice outcome.